Ciao. Kamora Lee is not letting up on Diddy because she just exposed him for unaliving and covering up the murder of her best friend, Erica Kennedy. Now, in case y'all didn't know, Erica worked very closely with Diddy as his fashion designer back in the early 2000s. However, right after she was done working with him, she wrote a tell-all book exposing Diddy's dirty secrets. And after the success of the book, she was found dead at her home. And to this day, nobody knows the cause of her death, despite there being several autopsy reports suggesting a possible homicide. And just like Kim Porter's death, Kamora believes Diddy messed with the investigation so he could cover it up because he had something to do with it. She's now asking for the case to be reopened. He's just like a big, bigger than life kind of, you know, uh, powerhouse. And so he just kind of turns and manipulates the press and people and to believe, you know, anything like you like gaslighting, you know, like. Now, for those of y'all who didn't know who Erica was, she was best friends with Kimora, serving as the maid of honor at Kimora's wedding to Russell Simmons and their godmother to their daughters, Ming and Aoki. Following her college graduation, Erica started her career working as a publicist with various top fashion designers, including Tommy Hilfiger and Diddy. However, just after a few months of working with Diddy, she quit her job. And now this is where things get real interesting interesting because right after quitting her job, she wrote an explosive book called Bling. The book detailed all the disturbing things she saw while she was working with Diddy and the other awful things that he would do to people. The book also detailed how a certain music mogul, which many people believe to be Russell Simmons, had an inappropriate relationship with an underage model. And in case y'all didn't know, Russell was pushing 40 when he started dating Gamora, who was only 16 at the time. Time. Now, the book went on to be a massive hit and even became a New York Times bestseller in 2004. Well, he did some writing before for uh... In Style, I was an entertainment reporter. I did a lot of celebrity interviews with a lot of hip hop artists that helped me give me material for the book. <laughs> How does it feel to have a, a, a first book out, a debut, and then people be so lyrical about it? Um, it's exciting, but I think people people like the book because it's a good book and it's funny and it's an entertaining read, but also because I think people are really fascinated by the hip-hop world. And this book really takes you behind the scenes and shows you like really what's going on in that VIP room at the P. Diddy party and what's going on in, you know, in the Hamptons and you know um, at the record label, like what really happens. And I think that's part of the fa fascination people have with the book. But as I said earlier, just after the book came out, Erica was found dead at her home in Miami. And mind you, she had no medical issues. But despite it being over a decade since she died, her cause of death has not been confirmed. Now, if y'all remember, after Kim Porter died, it was reported by multiple sources that Kim was also writing a tell-all book about her life and everything she went through with Diddy. But right as she was preparing to release the book, she died. Now, what's even more sketchy is that at the time of Kim's death, the coroner who was assigned to investigate her death, Ed Winter, ruled her death a homicide after he found huge doses of toxins in her body. Ed is actually the same coroner who investigated the deaths of other high-profile celebrities like Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Brittany Murphy, Paul Walker, Tom Petty, and more. So when Ed says something isn't right, then you know something really isn't right. But right after the autopsy was made public, he was fired from the case and replaced by another coroner. Now, I don't know about y'all, but there's only one person who has the power to get somebody as big as Ed fired, and that's Diddy. This new coroner was actually the one who ended up ruling it as pneumonia, and he took a whole two weeks to come to that conclusion, which is very weird within itself, because if it really was pneumonia, it wouldn't have taken two weeks. Now, Kim's family did not buy this, and neither did Kimora, because Kim never had any prior health issues leading up to the day of her death. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. 
it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. Oh, but of course it doesn't end here because when the autopsy results came out, there were questions about the manner in which Kim died. There were even reports at the time that Kim's family wanted her body exhumed for a proper investigation, but Diddy never allowed it. And according to sources, the report about Kim being found unresponsive by the house help was a lie made up by Diddy because she was actually found on her bed with blood on her pillowcase cases and a slight trail of blood on the bedroom floor that led to the bathroom. She was also strategically placed on the bed to mess with the police investigation. And as if that wasn't suspicious enough, Ed Winter was also found dead at his home earlier this year, right as all of this disturbing information started coming out. And what's even more crazy is that after Kim died, there was a leak DM from somebody who was in Kim's publishing company informing one one of her family members that they couldn't pull through with the book because Diddy's lawyers had served them with a cease and desist, ordering them not to release the book and to return all the files that Kim had given them to write about. The message read, just wanted to let y'all know that Sean has put the clamps on Kim Porter's book from making it to the shelves. Yeah, he done put that pressure on all parties that were involved in the process of putting this book together. Sean's lawyers have stepped up to the plate and hit them with that paperwork. Also, he's asking for any information, footage, documents, etc. that could contain private information about him or Kim to be seized and that they have three business days to surrender it. Paperwork was served to at least two of the individuals that are involved this past Thursday. Just thought I'd let you know. Just a few weeks after this went viral on social media, there was another leaked DM from one of the publishers revealing some of the things that Kim wrote about in her book. The email read, some of the things in the book cover Diddy's gay relationships, footage of these encounters, the men that he slept with, STDs, Diddy giving Usher an STD, and the explosive encounter between Diddy and Usher's mom, Mary J. Blige being pregnant by Diddy, and of course she had an abortion. The beating she took, pushing him down the steps in 2007 and breaking his foot. Also, how she used a strap on to please Diddy and how she would hysterically cry alone after doing so. How she protected Albie Shore from running into Diddy and would call him to warn him not to show up to certain places to avoid causing trouble. Ciao, Kim was really ready to destroy Diddy's whole career. And do y'all notice the pattern in all of these deaths? All these people who kept dropping dead left and right had something against Diddy that he didn't want anybody to find out. Erica wrote a book about him and then mysteriously died in her home. Kim died right before releasing her book, which also was going to be about him. And Ed died right after people started bringing up the fact that he initially found toxins in Kim's body that suggested she was murdered. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but there are way too many coincidences here. But when you think about Kim, I was thinking to myself the other day, Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, I'll be sure, Heavy D, and Puffy. And Kim was the longest working employee because she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Mm -hmm. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. What's D? Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Heavy D was found dead face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Then right after that, Al had a meeting, and I was going to meet up with him because we were in Vegas, and then the next thing you know... You want to know what they all had in common, though? The survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Mm -hmm. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life.
And then he goes into a coma. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has he? Has anything happened to him? He must be the luckiest mother because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning are gone. Just him. I guess Al disappointed you. And according to sources close to Kimura, she believes that Diddy had a hand in their deaths, especially Erica and Kim. He knew it was just a matter of time before Erica wrote another book, so he took her out before she could and unalived Kim before she could even finish hers. Kimura is also demanding for both Erica and Kim's cases to be reopened for a proper investigation. It's unclear why Diddy never went after Kimura too, considering the fact that she knows a lot about him, but some people claim it's probably because she was married to Russell. Russell was also equally as dirty and as powerful as Diddy, and Kimura having a whole family with him gave her some protection against Diddy. Now, as usual, the fans did not hold back, and they went in on Diddy, like this person who said, this is so sad, and these women didn't deserve this. Three beautiful women writing tell-all books and two unalived, and the other one he paid off thinking it would be all over. Another person said, Kimura needs to speak out so she can be protected because if anything mysterious happens to her, people will know Diddy had something to do with it. But now I want to know your thoughts. Do y'all think Diddy really had something to do with both Erica and Kim's deaths? As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and don't forget to click here to watch this other very messy video.